Hello everyone, bonjour tout le monde. Welcome back to another video. And today I will be sharing with you a health reformed chickpea brownie recipe. So this recipe means I will not be using chocolate. So there will be carob brownies. Now carob is very tasty and it's often used as a substitute for chocolate for those who can't tolerate it or just choose not to eat chocolate. And so I've noticed that carob tastes very much like chocolate when mixed with the right ingredients. And so I'm quite excited to try this recipe today. And it's not my own recipe, but it is from a recipe that I found. Um, I'll put the link in the description and I'll also um, put the list of the ingredients I put and added um, and modified to make my version. And yeah, I hope you enjoy. Now, the first thing though, before you start, get all your ingredients out, everything. And this is something I've always struggled with because I would always just kind of scramble and get all the ingredients I needed as I needed them, which is much messier and much more stressful. So get everything you need out, even the, um, the equipment that you might use, everything. Now I'm still trying to do this. Every time I cook, I try to think of getting everything out. It's a process, but I assure you it will make your job much more pleasant and easy. And for this recipe also, you will need to um, grease a, I think it's like an, a square little glass pan. I'll show you. Like this. And it, have it greased, so I use coconut oil. And to preheat your oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And you will also need a food processor, a spatula, a measuring cups and all that, just utensils, whatever you might need to help the job. Um, so without further ado, I will get started. So first thing you will need is a can of chickpeas. And now uh, the best way to do it is to mix all your wet ingredients first, so that's what I'll be doing here. So a can of chickpeas. Half a cup of peanut butter. Now it's preferable to have smooth, but in the food processor I'm guessing all the little chunks might get processed, but um, I just, I suggest using smooth peanut butter and unsalted and unsweetened, so the recipe is as natural as you can get it and as um, close to this recipe as you can get it. So there was a cup of peanut butter, uh, half a cup, I'm sorry, half a cup of maple syrup, maple syrup is my absolute favorite sweetener. Also, I am adding to this recipe to make them a mint carob brownie. I'm adding some peppermint oil. So this was not in the original recipe, but I find carob and peppermint is a really great combination. And last wet ingredient is melted coconut oil. So you can use different a different um, oil if you prefer, but again, this is uh, this one is from this one is what was in the recipe that I am basing this one off of. Okay, so this is a beautiful mess that will be become very smooth, and so you have to. Mix it until it becomes very smooth, and then we'll add the dry ingredients after. I'll see you after. Now, now that I've had it um, processed as smooth as I can get it, it is time to add the dry ingredients. So a quarter cup of carrot powder. Now this one is raw, I believe, 
And you can also buy, I know Bob's Red Mill has the toasted carob powder. I, it would change the flavor slightly because toasted carob, I've noticed, has obviously a toasted taste, but um, it's not as uh, sweet, it seems, than raw carob, but there isn't really that much of a, bit, a difference to your preference. So this was a quarter cup of almond flour. And now a quarter teaspoon of salt. I prefer either sea salt or Himalayan salt because those are the healthier ones. And now, let's see, they are in there and we will be mixing those. And I have a uh, half a cup of carob chips. Now these are unsweetened, but I will be adding those after. I will, I will not be processing them. Now my mixture is I'm sorry, I'm trying to use the selfie camera for this. It is all mixed. And I will be, I unplugged it, first of all, but I will be taking out the blade so that I can mix in half a cup of carob chips. And then after that, put it in the cooking pan and top it with some more carob chips. And let's see here. Yeah, take it out. Take out the blade because you can't mix that well with the blade in there. And it's going to be quite sticky, but that is okay. So. Make sure you use a spatula to get it out. It's going to be much easier to get everything and also to mix it. I would prefer mixing it in a bowl, but I really don't want to get another one. And another thing dirty, so I just am going to keep mixing them in here. So, and then my carob chips are pretty well incorporated. Be transferring them to the pan. And the pan, make sure it is greased with some kind of oil to help it from sticking. Let's see. I am quite excited to see how this is going to turn out because. I haven't had brownies in a very long time, believe it or not, because I can't eat chocolate. And also, I choose I would choose not to. But I am looking forward to seeing how these will taste. Now, one thing I have really learned and started to appreciate with all the things that I've had to adapt to over the years. Learning that I had to take gluten out of my diet and uh, chocolate because of the caffeine. And what else? Also dairy. Dairy I had to take out. That one wasn't too challenging for me, apart from certain things that I enjoyed eating, like ice cream and cheese, like most people. But we have quickly, quickly found that there are many substitutes nowadays. So, But I've learned to enjoy adapting recipes and learning how to be creative. Because even though you might not have certain dietary needs, you still need to learn how to be creative in the kitchen if you want your food to taste good and to be healthy. So I encourage you out there to not be discouraged if you think that you have no chance at being a good cook. I, it took me quite a few years to adapt and now I enjoy it and appreciate the challenge that I get 
while cooking. So take this out of the way. It's all in the pan. And now I will be putting it in the oven. Now, here it is before going in the oven at 350. And I have to be honest, I forgot what the recipe said. So I will just put it for 20 minutes. But again, I will link that recipe that I am basing this off of in the uh, description so you will know. But I will be putting it for about, let's say, 20 minutes. And I really hope that you will enjoy this recipe and that you have been encouraged to just try something new and different and healthier and, you know, just have fun. Have fun to making healthy and tasty food. It's really possible and it's easier than you might th think. So I hope this was a blessing and I hope you have a very good day. God bless.